Once upon a time, there was a wicked sprite. Indeed, he was the most mischievous of all sprites. He had made a mirror with the power of causing all that was good and beautiful to look poor and mean. In this mirror, the most beautiful landscapes looked like boiled spinach, and the best persons were turned into frights, or appeared to stand on their heads. Their faces were so distorted that they were not to be recognized. All the little sprites who went to his school, for he kept a sprite school, told each other that a miracle had happened, and that only now, as they thought, it would be possible to see how the world really looked. They ran about with the mirror. Then they thought they would fly up to the sky and have a joke there. Higher and higher still they flew, when suddenly the mirror shook so terribly with grinning that it flew out of their hands and fell to the earth, where it was dashed in a hundred million and more pieces. Some of these pieces were hardly so large as a grain of sand, and they flew about in the wide world, and when they got into people's eyes, there they stayed. The fine splinters still flew about in the air. In a large town, we meet a boy and a girl. The boy's name is Kay, and the girl's name is Gerda. They are best friends and live right next to each other, only an arch of foliage and flowers apart. In the summer, Kay and Gerda were allowed to sit outside the windows on their little stools among the flowers. In the winter, on the other hand, that pleasure was over. They were obliged to go down the long stairs and then up the long stairs again, because outside was quite the snowstorm. In the evening, when little Kay was at home, he climbed up on the chair by the window. A few snowflakes were falling, and one, the largest of all, remained lying on the edge of a flower pot. The flake of snow grew larger and larger, and at last it was like a young lady, dressed in the finest white gauze made of a million little flakes like stars. She nodded towards the window and beckoned with her hand. The little boy was frightened and jumped down from the chair. It seemed to him as if, at the same moment, a large bird flew past the window. The next day, it was a sharp frost. Kay and Gerda looked at a picture book full of beasts and of birds, and it was then, the clock in the church tower was just striking five, that Kay said, Oh, I feel such a sharp pain in my heart, and now something has got into my eye. It was one of the pieces of glass from the magic mirror that had got into his eye, and poor Kay had got another piece right in his heart. It would soon become like ice. What are you doing? cried the little Gerda, and as he perceived her fright, he pulled up another rose, got in at the window, and hastened off from dear little Gerda. His games were now quite different to what they had formerly been, and it was not long after this that Kay came one day with large gloves on and his little sledge at his back and bawled right into Gerda's ears. I have permission to go out into the square where the others are playing, and off he was in a moment. There in the marketplace, some of the boldest of the boys used to tie the sledges to the carts as they passed by, and so they were pulled along and got a good ride. A large sledge passed by. It was painted quite white, and there was someone in it wrapped up in a rough white mantle of fur, with a rough white fur cap on his head. The sledge drove round the square twice, and Kay tied on his sledge as quickly as he could, and off he drove with it. Every time he was going to untie his sledge, the person nodded to him, and then Kay sat quiet. And so on they went till they came outside the gates of the town. Then the snow began to fall so thickly that the little boy could not see an arm's length before him, when suddenly he let go the string he held in his hand in order to get loose from the sledge, but it was of no use. Still the little vehicle rushed on with the quickness of the wind. He was quite frightened. 
the large sledge stopped, and the person who drove rose up. It was a lady. Her cloak and cap were of snow. She was tall and of slender figure, and of a dazzling whiteness. It was the Snow Queen. Are you still cold? asked she, and then she kissed his forehead. Ah, oh, it was colder than ice. It penetrated to his very heart, which was already almost a frozen lump. It seemed to him as if he were about to die. The Snow Queen kissed Kay once more, and then he forgot little Gerda, grandmother, and all whom he had left at his home. But what did little Gerda think when Kay did not return? Where could he be? Nobody knew where he was. Many sad tears were shed, and little Gerda wept long and bitterly. At last spring came with its warm sunshine. Gerda decided to go look for Kay. Perhaps the river will carry me to little Kay, said she, and then she grew less sad. On her journey, she met the old wife, who tried to make her forget Kay by removing all the roses from her beautiful garden. The elimination of the roses was supposed to make Gerda stay with her. She had always wanted a little girl like Gerda. But Gerda left the old wife to find her way to the castle. Gerda had to rest herself again. When, exactly opposite to her, a large raven came hopping over the white snow. He had long been looking at Gerda, and now he said, Call! Call! Good day! Good day! He could not say it better, but he felt a sympathy for the little girl, and asked her where she was going, all alone. She told the raven her whole story, and asked if he had seen Kay. The raven nodded very gravely, and said, It may be. It may be. What? Do you really think so? cried the little girl, and she nearly squeezed the raven to death so much did she kiss him. Gently, gently, said the raven. I think I know. I think that it may be little Kay. But now he has forgotten you for the princess. Does he live with a princess? asked Gerda. Yes. Listen, said the raven. I will tell you as well as I can and he told all he knew. The raven told her about the princess and how people came from everywhere for her big wedding day with the prince. The prince came from abroad and was just as clever as the princess. Gerda thought at that moment that it was Kay, because Kay was smart. So Gerda asked the raven to bring her to him. The raven had a mate at the castle so she showed the way to the sleeping room where the princess and prince slept. Gerda rushed quickly to the prince's bed and saw as soon as the prince woke up that it wasn't Kay. Gerda cried and passed out on the floor. Next day, when Gerda woke up, the ravens had already told the princess and prince her story. And with all their kindness, they provided Gerda with a carriage for her journey and wished her luck. Along the journey, she faced complications as she was taken captive by the robber people who wanted her to cook food for them or even eat her for dinner. Until the little robber maiden said, You shall sleep with me tonight, with all my animals. They had something to eat and drink, and then went into a corner where straw and blankets were lying. The robber maiden asked Gerda, Tell me now, once more, all about little Kay. Gerda told her story to the robber maiden. Then the wood pigeon said, Coo! Coo! We have seen little Kay. A white hen carried his sledge. He himself sat in the carriage of the Snow Queen. Where did the Snow Queen go to? She has no doubt gone to Lapland, for there is always snow and ice there. Ask the reindeer who is tethered over there. Ice and snow is there. There it is, glorious and beautiful, said the reindeer. 
In the morning, Gerda told the robber maiden all that the wood pigeons had said, and the little maiden looked very serious, but she nodded her head and said, That's no matter, that's no matter. Do you know where Lapland lies? she asked of the reindeer. Who should know better than I? said the animal. I was born and bred there. The robber maiden let Gerda go, as she couldn't stand her longing and love for Kay. The reindeer went along with Gerda to show her the path. Suddenly, they stopped before a little house, which looked very miserable. Nobody was at home except an old Lapland woman who was dressing fish by the light of an oil lamp. You have more than a hundred miles to go before you get to Finland. There the Snow Queen has her country house. I will give you a few words from me, which I will write on a dried haberdine. For paper, I have none. This you can take with you to the Finland woman, and she will be able to give you more information than I can. Gerda and the reindeer left the Lapland woman. At last they came to Finland. They knocked at the chimney of the Finland woman, for as to a door, she had none. She read what was written on the fish skin. She read it three times. She then knew it by heart, so she put the fish into the cupboard. The Finland woman then said, "'Tis true, little Kay is at the Snow Queen's, but the reason of that is he has a splinter of glass in his eye and in his heart. These you must get out first. But can't you give little Gerda something which will endow her with power? asked the reindeer. I can give her no more power than what she has already. Don't you see how men and animals are forced to serve her? How well she gets through the world barefooted? She must not hear of her power from us. That power lies in her heart. If she cannot get to the Snow Queen by herself and rid little Kay of the glass, we cannot help her. And now the Finland woman placed little Gerda on the reindeer's back, and off he ran with all imaginable speed. The walls of the palace were of driving snow. In the middle of the empty, endless hall of snow was a frozen lake. It was cracked in a thousand pieces, but each piece was so like the other that it seemed the work of a cunning artificer. The Snow Queen was not to be seen anywhere, and little Kay was quite blue, yes, nearly black with cold. But he did not observe it, for she had kissed away all feeling of cold from his body, and his heart was a lump of ice. Suddenly, little Gerda stepped through the great portal into the palace. Gerda repeated her evening prayer, and the winds were laid as though they slept, and little Gerda entered the vast, empty, cold halls. There, she beheld Kay. She recognized him, flew to embrace him, and cried out, her arms firmly holding him the while, Kay! Sweet little Kay! Have I then found you at last? But he sat quite still, benumbed and cold. Then little Gerda shed burning tears, and they fell on his bosom. They penetrated to his heart. They thawed the lumps of ice and consumed the splinters of the looking glass. Hereupon Kay burst into tears. He wept so much that the splinter rolled out of his eye, and he recognized her and shouted, Gerda! Sweet little Gerda, where have you been so long? And where have I been? He looked round him. How cold it is here, said he. How empty and cold. And he held fast by Gerda, who laughed and wept for joy. They took each other by the hand and wandered forth out of the large hall. They talked of their old grandmother and of the roses upon the roof. And wherever they went, the winds ceased raging and the sun burst forth. And when they reached the bush with the red berries, they found the reindeer waiting for them. The church bells rang, and the children recognized the high towers and the large town. It was that in which they dwelt. The clock said tick-tock, and the finger moved round. But as they entered, they remarked that they were now grown up. The roses on the leaves hung blooming in by the open window. There stood the little children's chairs, and Kay and Gerda sat down on them, holding each other by the hand. They both had forgotten the cold, empty splendor of the Snow Queen, as though it had been a dream. There sat two grown-up people, grown-up and yet children, children at least in heart, 
and it was summertime. Summer? Glorious summer. <laughs> 